How many people believe in the Bible here? Don't be scared. Huh? One, two, three. Can I get a four? You believe in the Bible? Four. Four, right? You believe. See, to me, I'm counting folk because the hands are going like this. <laughs> Joel, you don't believe in the Bible? I think I'm misunderstanding the question. Um, you're misunderstanding. Yeah, what exactly okay. do you mean? Do <laughs> you believe in the Bible? I believe in the truth in the Bible. So what? Yes, I believe in the Bible. You, what? Yes. You do believe in the Bible. Why? The truth in the Bible. The truth is the Bible? No, the truth in the Bible, I believe. The truth in the Bible? That's revealed to me. That's revealed to you? You want to add something else to it? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So the, you believe in the truth. You believe in the Bible. The truth in the Bible, that is revealed to you. Mm. Okay. Um, Dalai, you believe in the Bible? Uh, yeah, I didn't, raise, I didn't know whether to raise my hand because I didn't hear whether you said do your or hand don't. hand went up a little bit and came back real fast. I didn't hear whether you said do or don't. Do you? Oh, yes. You believe in the Bible? Yeah, I was always raised from day one. But so. To raise to do what? Oh, go to church every Sunday, uh, taught the Bible, Sunday school, etc. And so that's why you believe in the Bible? Yeah, and plus the Bible has a lot of quotes that people never talk about that uh, tell the truth about women. So about what? There's a, there's a plus. There's a, a woman-hating man-hater. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You believe in the Bible? I'm honestly not knowledgeable enough to say whether or not. Oh, okay. You're not knowledgeable enough to say why or not? I don't have enough knowledge. Okay. And hey, you say you believe in the Bible, right? And why? <laughs> you say yes, right? Yes. Okay. I need to have you on record. And why? Because that's where I got it all, you know, knowledge from. What? That's where all my knowledge comes from. From the Bible? Yes. That's why you believe in it? It's like, there was no way on my own I could have found out that a first man was Adam. First woman was Eve, you know. Yeah. This is, uh, had did not been for it. But... At, had push come to shove, how do they say it? As, um, push come to shove? Yeah, shove. Is that the, the this expression? Uh, I might, I will put the Bible aside and move what I think what's right right now versus, let's say, a year or two years ago. Oh, okay. Ask about you don't believe in the Bible? I do believe in the Bible. Oh, you do believe in the Bible? Yeah. And t tell me why. I know you've heard what I had to say about it, so don't say what I had to say right now. Why do you believe in the Bible? I believe he was inspired by God, and uh, even though it's you know, mistranslated, and you can definitely get more meaning by reading in Hebrew or Greek or whatever, mm -hmm. I still feel like it like guided me, whatever question I have. The Bible guiding you? Yeah. Okay. It talked to you? It speaks to me. <laughs> the Bible does? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And you say you believe in the Bible? Yes. This is so much fun. It fun? seems like a trick question somehow. <laughs> it does. It's like, well, yes, I believe in the Word of God in the Bible. Yeah. I'm so, sorry? So, yes, I do believe in the Word of God. Why does it feel like a trick question? Uh, because it, I, I don't think I've um, been you don't think queried what? the way you're doing it. You don't think what? <laughs> I don't think I've had the question asked of, ask of me the way you're doing it. Right. So and so like, it feels like it's a trick question. Yes. Is it a good question, though? Uh, well, yes, especially if something is going to be revealed that I hadn't thought of, so I can't wait <laughs> to get to the end of this. <laughs> oh, have you ever thought about why do I believe in the Bible? Uh, well, for me, it's like the words are alive in the Bible. Alive? Uh, yes, and uh, I haven't read any other book, you know, that, you know, uh, leaves you with a spiritual, you know, um, touching, <laughs> whatever that you get when you're reading the Bible. Spiritual There's something touching. different. Yeah, there's something different about it. Right. Yeah, so um, I, have, I haven't, um, you know, I haven't really studied all that many other religions. Right. Uh, but I certainly have not heard anybody speak with the kind of authority that the words of God speak. Yes. And neither uh, that uh, Yeshua speaks or Jesus speaks. You know, those words are very powerful and they stick with you there. Who and, taught uh, you to believe in the Bible? Who taught me? 
Uh, nobody. I just read and... No, somebody <laughs> taught you, your mama probably. Oh, oh yes, of course. You know, she uh -huh. you know, have a... So your mama taught you to believe in the Bible? Um, well, she, she was more like taking us to church. Right. Yeah. And she taught you to believe in the Bible. And the preacher confirmed it. I don't know if I would put it the way you're describing it, but, but yes, okay. <laughs> no, no how did, who taught you to believe in the Bible? Uh, well, as I recall when I was growing up, that my mother would just always make sure we got ready to go to church on Sunday. Yeah. And, yeah so that, and it's amazing, in the black community, listening. the moment you pop out of your mama's womb, you're at the church. You know, you're just at the church. And then you go to the club. Right? And then you become an alcoholic and a drug addict. But that's the order of things. Not everybody, of course. Who don't believe in the Bible? Why don't you believe in... Well, let me ask over here first. Why don't you... Over here. Why don't you believe in the Bible? I, I don't think you should believe in it. I believe the Bible is true, but I believe you should believe in God. Is everything in the Bible true? I think uh, there's been some misinterpretations, yeah. but uh, like I said, okay, you should believe right. in God. There is nowhere in the Bible where it tells you to believe in the Bible. Nowhere in there. And this is so important because whatever you believe in controls you, and it stands between you and your belief in God. If you believe in another person, that person stands between you and God. If you believe in cows, the cows stand between you and God. If you believe in the Bible, it stands between you and God, and you cannot believe in God. We should only, the Bible doesn't tell us to believe in the Bible. What it tells us is to have faith in God, only God. But if you believe in anything else, you cannot have faith in God because that is your God. But we've been taught, we've been taught by people who can't see it. And I think they mean well because, you know, they're taught that too. They have been taught to believe in the Bible. And the Bible is not the word of God. It's the word from God. And the word of God is written in our hearts. And once we enter into that kingdom within, we are guided by the truth within us. For an example, the, the preacher asked me during the debate, well, what would happen if a homosexual you ran into a homosexual, and he says, he, he is that. What would you tell him? I, would, I said, I would tell him that God is not for that, and that he can repent and get over it. He's like, is that it? I'm like, yeah, that's what I would tell him. And then he's like, but how about the Bible? You need to read the Bible to him. But I don't have the Bible with me. And so since I know it's in the Bible, why can't I just tell him? But the people who believe in the Bible believe that you have to have the Bible with you and read it to the person in order for them to believe it, I guess. And if a person's going to believe it, they're going to believe it whether you just tell them or read it to them. They're not going to believe it. They're not going to believe it when you read it to them. But that's how serious people are about the Bible. They think that uh, you just have to read the Bible. And um, even in the debate, I would ask him a question, and he would just read the scripture. He would not answer the question. And then the scripture he read doesn't apply to the question. But he preached about that when he read, and, and so to blind people, it looked like he's answering the question. But you have to be careful what you believe in. Because whatever or whomever you believe in will control you. For an example, Jesus said, don't make me a, your God. It's not me, it's the Father that's in me. And when they would carry on about Jesus, he's like, don't do that. Because uh, it's my father in me, it's not me. And they turned Jesus into a God. They're like, no, you are God. He's like, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. And they made him be God. And not understanding that's blocking you away from God. Jesus was the bridge to God. From earth to God. He's not God. He's our brother. He came to make a way that we return to the Father. And he made that clear. That's why a lot of people have, like, they'll put the preacher on a pedestal and the preacher become their God. They'll put whatever, music or food, that become their God. You have to be careful what you believe in. If you notice if you're a drug addict, 
How many drug addicts we have? Y'all can tell me. I'm not going to judge. <laughs> the, the drug is the God. Because every time they need to feel good, they go to the drug. You had a question, Joe, about that? Yeah. I was just wondering, um, well, what made you, uh, just a little bit more details on why you feel um, that it's misinterpreted, the Bible, or why, why it's not truth, or, or however you said it. Uh, the Bible itself? Yeah. Well, the Bible is a good book to read. It is inspired, the man who wrote it have, were inspired by God. But the Bible is a road map back to where you should find the kingdom of heaven, where God is. God said that if someone tell you to look here, look there, don't do it, because the kingdom of heaven is within. Go within and know him. And that's what the Bible tells us, to go within to know God, not look without. But if you have made the Bible uh, to be the word of God, then you stop with the Bible, never going within to find God. It was the difference between, I'm just confused on the difference between the two. Between like, what? Between reading it and then whatever you're feeling from it, or whatever the case is, separate from not reading it and feeling it without having to but read I, it. But you should read it. Mm -hmm. So the Bible's a good book to read. I'm not against that at all. But don't read to remember. Because when you remember the Bible, you have the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge of good and evil puff you up. And give you a false mm. illusion that you are a son of God. Mm. And because you know, you know both now. And it just puffs up your ego. And you go around preaching to everybody. When you're not living that. You have not become that. Yeah, Except yeah. in the mind. In the ego of your mind. You think you're that but you haven't. The sense. knowledge of good and evil is not good for you. Mm. That's why you're not, you should hang on to what you read. Just read it and let it go in one ear and out the other. Even when Satan starts quoting the Bible to you, let the words pass. Don't hold on to them. You want revelation. You don't want the voice in your head. Mm. And the Satan will quote the Bible to you. Mm. He'll be like, 1 John chapter 2 said, don't sin. And he'll be like, yeah, don't sin. Praise the Lord. And you go around pouncing everybody on the head, telling them not to sin. When you're sinning yourself because you're operating from the knowledge of good and evil, mm. not from revelation that guides us. Mm. Isn't that something? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, there's one thing that should not be in the Bible. But the Bible has been translated over years and years and years and years. And people translate the Bible according to the culture, according to their own fears and doubts. And so if you have faith in the Bible, you can be taught wrong. You have to have faith in God so the Holy Spirit can teach you. Um, the Bible, in the Bible it says, uh, Study. To show thyself worthy. Right? Something like that. Anybody know what that is? You read that in the Bible? This is Memorial Day weekend. You can talk. We don't have to work tomorrow. So we can rest the rest of the day. Anybody ever read that in the Bible? Study to show. You can't study to show yourself worthy. You have to seek the kingdom of heaven. And, and when people study the Bible, they have a false sense of feeling worthy. But they're unworthy. But they have been deceived by the knowledge of good and evil. And good, the knowledge of good and evil causes you to have an opinion about everything, too. What's right? What's wrong? What's right? So you start playing God. And you start judging other people. When you see an a LGBT person walking down the road, anybody ever seen one? We saw one yesterday, but we weren't for sure if it was one. So we were riding in the Uber. And we stopped at the light, and there was this person standing on the corner. And so we were like, is that an LGBT or a real woman? And we were like, is it, is it real? <laughs> we were trying to figure out. We could not tell. If I was a woman, I wouldn't allow the LGBT people to come out until late at night. Because now you're being confused if it's a man or a woman. So the women shouldn't like that. But we couldn't figure out if it was an LGBT. But we didn't judge it. We didn't hate it. We didn't have an opinion. Because you can see that a person like that is lost. They've, they've been traumatized. And so you have compassion for that person. Instead of looking at the person and judging the person. You can see that they're blind and can't see. But if you have the knowledge of good and evil, right away you're going to say, that's wrong. 
You're going to judge the person. Play God with the person. And no compassion is in that. Because we're all blind at some point and need to wake up. So read it and let it be revealed to you. So. Yes. Okay. But not in the head. Mm. If the voice is talking to you about what the Bible is saying, don't pay it in the mind because that's Satan, your father, the devil, interpreting the Bible. Good but you, just yeah. put it, open it up, read it, whatever. And don't read the whole Bible. Do you know there are people who read the whole Bible? How would you like to be married to a person like that? <laughs> <laughs> and some people read it two or three times. Would you like to be married to a person who read the Bible two or three times? I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a try, buddy. <laughs> See what happened to you and your children. Um, so it's in our hearts. And when you forgive, God will forgive you. Then you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Then the truth will become alive to you. This old way will fall away and you become a new person. Mm. Being guided from your heart and not from somebody else or a book. But the Bible is a good book to read. I'm not saying don't read it. Just don't believe in it. Only believe in God. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. You read the Bible, Joel? Mm -hmm. You read the Bible? Mm -hmm. I can't hear you. Yeah. Uh, you say, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yes. You do read it? Yes. And, and who taught you to believe in it? Um... Society. I mean, I've always thought that was what you were supposed to do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I was taught that, too. Mm -hmm. And until it revealed to me, you know, until God caused me to forgive and allowed me to enter into the kingdom, I didn't know for sure you could live that way. But it makes sense because I've caught myself in a lot of moments uh, with the good and evil thing. Yeah. Because you read it and you know the knowledge, you 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 kind of live up to that. And yes. you're not even there yet. Yep. <clears throat> so I've caught myself in those situations, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you end up judging your own self, too. Yeah. Which is, is a down, you know, a downer. Mm -hmm. we, are, we don't have a right to judge. But if you have the knowledge of good and evil, you're going to judge. Mm -hmm. And you have no compassion. And as long as you're doing that, you're playing God. You're in a guilty mode. Or, you, you know, you judge yourself as good or bad or this is right or wrong. Adam, did, Adam only knew good before he fell away from the Father. He didn't know evil. Not at all. He didn't know evil. He only knew good. So he couldn't make a judgment. Then he um, disobeyed his father by believing into a lie. Now he know both, good and evil. And that's where the problem is. That's why you must be born again to overcome that. It's such a nice way to live, too, not to judge people and yourself. But Satan want you to judge yourself. Because he comes with my, oh, you be trying not to judge yourself? He's like, no, 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 that's wrong. No, 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 that's right. He get loud to you, trying to make you judge yourself. But you recognize his voice and you're able to resist it. That's why God said, my children shall know me by my voice. His children recognize his voice. And all of the children of Satan recognize his voice, too. The people who live by the voices in their heads are children of the devil. And they recognize their father's voice. So the next time you meet someone, they say, oh, I'm so depressed. I'm so lonely. I'm so fat. I'm so poor. I'm so black or white. Or I'm so male. I'm so female. Just know Satan is their father. And so just say, you know what? You listen to your daddy, the devil. Because that's what's happening. They'll listen to the voice in their head. And so, but once you drop that anger by forgiving, you're no longer subject to the voice of your father, the devil. It's such a nice way to be. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. 